Now, we're going to move on to the flywheel section. Flywheels have a lot to determine the proper setting of the clutch. Also, the proper, as far as clutch function goes. Before, we were talking about how we set the A dimension at the half inch and you're not supposed to adjust the cover. But you want to achieve that clearance between the throw-up bearing and the clutch brake. Now I'm going to show you exactly how to measure the flywheel to see if we need a spacer or a first oversized or a second oversized when it comes to the brake. On the 15-inch flywheels, here's what we're going to do. Take something that's flat, straight edge preferably, and even if you have to go with a good yardstick. I'm just going to use more or less this for right now. On a brand new flywheel, if you measure from the back of the flywheel housing. Now guys, picture this, this should normally be on the back of an engine, but we don't have to have an engine here today, so we're gonna use this. You take and you measure from this surface area down to the actual face of the flywheel. This is all you gotta do. You form a, more or less form a T, you bring it up, see what your dimension is, and on a brand new flywheel, that's two and a half inches. So do a little subtraction, and you'll know how much wear is on that flywheel. This is also what's going to show up extra on the back side between the clutch brake and the uh, throw-up bearing. Next, the 14-inch clock stop. We've actually got a reference point on these. We've got the 12 slots and the 12 holes in there where the dry pins go. If you measure from the top of the dry pin hole, let me get my ruler here again, to the bottom where the disc hits on a brand new flywheel, that dimension is one inch. Okay? Now, this is a recessed flywheel, which means whatever you take out of the bottom, got to take off the top. This flywheel should be 2.937 or 2 and 15 sixteenths plus or minus five thousandths. So always you want to check that. You know a lot of times you take your flywheels to the machine shop and you go well where we took off the bottom yeah we measure that we take off the top. But you got to watch that because it may have been machined wrong the first time. So it's best to always go in and take your mic and measure the depth and make sure it's 2.937. If that depth is off, it's going to have a reflection as far as your A dimension. It might have more A dimension or less A dimension. So watch this. Now, the next thing on a 14-inch flywheel you got to watch out for are the drive lines right here. You know, when I first started again in the clutch business, 75% of all clutches sold use 14-inch pot flywheels. So everybody was very, very picky about making sure those drive pins were in straight. So the fine art of setting drive pins has been lost because almost all of our warranties that we get back related to 14-inch cast covers, we can always pick it up for non-release and it's hanging up on the drive, it's hanging up on the drive lug to the center plate. Ideally, here is a good way of checking that. Get you some 5 8 nuts. Place the nuts in the flywheel. Grab your center plate. What those nuts do, it keeps you from pinching your fingers. Also, it's the thickness of a disc. We're going to set the center plate in there. We're going to click it to one side. Ideally, 7 thousandths is what you want, but I prefer to use a 5 thousandths feeder gauge. You should be able to go down the same side of every one of those lugs, all the way down, and then you know your center plate's going to float properly. The next thing is, you're supposed to put the set screws back in. A lot of guys will call and they'll go ahead and they'll knock the pins out and you don't bother to put the set screws in. Not only is there supposed to be one set screw in to hold the lug from doing this, but you actually should put two in. One in to lock it down and one in to keep this one from backing off. So that's something else is key. Now, let's go, when should you use a flywheel and when should you not use a flywheel? This is a tool we've got here, it's called an FG1, which is a flywheel gauge. Actually, it serves four functions. 
The first being going back to setting the clutch, it's a half inch for your A dimension or for the clearance between the clutch brake and the throw off bearing. Here's your eighth inch, which is between the fork and the bearing pad for your free cup. But you want 5 16th minimum clearance from the surface area to the top of the flywheel mounting bolt. So what you do here is you lay that in there and you can judge by how much clearance you got. If you're right at 5 16th or less, it's time for a new flywheel. You should not use that. The flywheels you really got to watch for are the Series 60 Detroit flywheels because they're very thin right from the factory. Also, on the Caterpillar engines, on some of the uh, 3406s and C15s and C16s that were built before 2004, they have a thicker bolt head and a thicker washer. So what happens as you turn that flywheel down, naturally the bolt head is going to be higher. So if you're making contact with that flywheel, simply go back and there's a bullet now from CAD's CLB007. And they actually assign it where they give you a thinner flywheel washer and also a shorter bolt. Do not take and leave the washers out of these things and do not grind the heads off the flywheel mounting bolts. That is a no-no all the way. Next thing you kind of want to watch out for on flywheels is make sure that the pilot bearing is tight in the board. If it's loose, it's going to cause a more or less an out of, light, out, out of a misalignment situation. So you always want to make sure you can drive it in there. Now, with the cost of flywheels these days, it's better at that time just to go ahead and buy a new flywheel. They used to go ahead and bore them out and put a bronze sleeve in them and everything, but that kind of got, got a little costly too. So kind of watch that. Now, also on these 15 inch flywheels, a lot of people think they're flat, and they're actually not. See this lip around here? This is actually a pilot lip to hold the cover intact while you're bolting it down. Now, as you cut the surface area, this lip gets taller all the time. You do not want this lip height to exceed 200 thousandths. A lot of them are running around 160 or 140, but again, on the FG1, if you notice a little notch right here, this is to actually measure the lip height. You can do it this way, as you can see there's plenty of room here, or you can do it this way. So functions, half, eighth, five sixteenths, and 200,000 minimum on your lip height. Gentlemen, you must surface the flywheel. If you don't surface the flywheel, there's no warranty on your clutch. Now, I know a lot of you guys go, eh, I looked at it, it looks fine. Well, what you want to do is actually lay something kind of fairly flat across the flywheel, and you can actually see the groove that's cut into it from the butt. This is going to shorten your clutch life, and also it's going to throw your adjustment also. Do surface the flywheels. Now, we were talking a little bit before about pilot bearings. This is your standard pilot bearing right here, your 6306. But also, now it's recommended you run something called a Viton seal because these newer engines are really putting out some heat. Now, a Viton seal is distinguishable because it's got a blue seal on it rather than a black. Now, this thing is packed full of high heat grease, so it can withstand that heat before it fails. So always remember, Viton seal. That'll get you a lot longer life out of your pilot bearings also.